What's up, everybody? So welcome back to the channel and the Spotify series. I just want to see what I can do to improve this app right now. And already it's pretty good. You know, I noticed that there was a lot of space over here on the audio player. And I feel like we could restyle this to make this whole thing kind of be more proportionate. And honestly, why don't we just center this whole section to be in the center and then i think that would get rid of our ui problems with the nav player i keep calling it the nav player because <laughs> that's what i call it in my own app wave clouds because i have a very similar setup on wave clouds right now see we have this bottom player and in my app i call it a nav player as you can see this one has a few different more features than the one in our app like i have a volume bar so you change the volume we might actually add one of these because that's kind of crucial for Spotify. We also have a favorite button so you can favorite the audios. So that's just like a little example of what we are going to build for sure in this app. So for right now, let's try to center the content in the audio player. So to do that, I'm going to go into the code and then go over to the music folder and the audio player partial. So this is where we have all of our code set up right now. And what we're doing is we have a flex item center. But I think if we just add justify center, it should already center the content inside. Let's see. Ooh, just like that, we got the justify center. Now the image does look a little bit strange, but it's working. So let's see if we can do something on the image. Like maybe I should add some padding, like a P2. Now, I don't know if that's better, but this actually, you know what, with the padding, it does look pretty good, I think. And it's centered now. Oh, this is sweet. This actually looks really good to me. Oh, shoot. Those songs are probably copyrighted. I didn't even think about that when I was putting in content for the app. I was just using some other artists' songs, which means a lot of these probably are copyrighted, which is pretty annoying. But obviously, that's not a problem. For you guys or anyone who's following it's just for me because i'm a youtuber and eventually i want these videos to get monetized but look at this i can't believe how we we fixed the styling a lot just by doing this one thing it looks really good right now in my opinion this is like a slam down good looking audio player i don't know am i blocking it but let me move my face a little bit or my guy what if i put him on top of the audio player for this series this looks good. Look at that audio player at the bottom. How was that? This actually is my song that I produced. So it's not copyrighted. Uh, what should I do? I guess I don't even need to be listening to music. But I might want to actually add more music that's not copyrighted. Switch out these songs. But it's kind of a pain. Like I could delete all of these, but then I have to repost. Uh, so I'm just gonna try not to listen to them for too long. I'm gonna be coding anyway, so it doesn't really matter But this is our setup if you guys remember this is our home page We have you know this simple thing with some images and you click the play button It brings you over to the music page Where we can view all of the songs right now. They're on the app and we can start streaming the different songs So from here, I think it'd be cool to add a nav bar Which would have like a link to sign in as a user So that's a good next step so where I'm going to put this is probably in the layouts application. Now, the only thing that we might want to think about is the difference between the different accounts. So, for example, as an artist, you have that whole other section. I don't know if you, if you guys remember. So we probably wouldn't want to show that for artists that are signed in. But we can actually take care of that situation and we can only show it for art for users with a little condition. But I'm just going to, I'm going to render the partial, which is going to be the layouts nav bar, just like that. And then I won't show it for artists by doing condition if not current underscore artist. So if there's no signed in artist, then we're going to show this every time, the nav bar. So now we need to create that partial, which I'm going to put it inside the layouts folder. I'm going to create a new file. It's going to be underscore navbar.html.erb. So 
that's going to set up that partial. And inside the partial, I'm going to add our navbar code. So I'm going to start off with a div. Uh, we can give that a width full. And I'll just do a fixed height of like 16. And actually, we're going to add the fixed property so that it stays at the same position. And then we'll do top zero, which means it should be aligned at the very top of the page. So it's similar to how we built the audio player, how we used fixed in the bottom. But the nav bar is basically the opposite. And then inside of it, we can start off with like a link to maybe like home or something. And I think home, it could just go to like the root path. So like a slash, but I almost want it to just go back to the music page. What do you guys think? Cause I think eventually we won't even show this home page once you're signed in as a user. So I'm pretty sure home should just go to like slash music. You can just do that for now. And I'll do a class text XL, text white, or maybe just text large. I don't want to be in too big. Let's take a look at what it looks like. All right, so here we have the link up there. I can't really see the nav bar, so I almost want to add a background color. Do like a BG Indigo 900 to be a little bit different. Oh, that's a lot different actually than the background, which is a BG Gray 900. So like the regular page is gray. Our nav bar is now a little bit blue. It's also kind of too big. Let's do a height 10. Oh yeah, that looks a little bit better, honestly. And then we can do another layer of like a div inside of here where we can add a max width 2XL and then the MX auto. So this will give it a max width that it can expand out to, which would be like basically this much. And then it'll go, it'll be all the way over here on the other side too. I might use it a little bit more so that it matches up with where the audios are. So we do like a 5XL. That's a little bit better. See, it matches up with the audios. We could even use padding if we really wanted to get to the right point. We could try like a PX8. Push it over. Oh, now it looks like perfect aligned with the audio cards. And we can also do, let's do flex. Let's do height full flex and item center. We don't want to position all these links in the center because I noticed it's a little bit off center. So if you reload, oh yeah, this looks pretty good. So we can click there to go home. Another thing we want to also realize is once you add a nav bar, um, since it has a fixed width, the content behind the nav bar is going to get hidden just like it did for the audio player. So if you remember on the music show page, we had to add this padding bottom just to make sure there's always enough space to see the cards at the bottom. You could always scroll down. That's why there's like this bit of padding down here. So we have to do the same thing for the nav bar, but we can actually do that because the nav bar is always going to be showing we can just do that in the application file right here. We can add that special class, but I'm going to make sure that it doesn't apply for the artist because they're probably, they're not going to have that at least for right now. So we can say padding top n, if not an artist, just like that. Reload. There we go. Now we have the correct amount of padding. So we have space to view all of the cards. Yeah, this looks pretty good. So we're going to have the home link here. And on the other side, we can have the sign in and sign up links. So let's go back into that navbar partial. And I'm going to add another class onto this div, which is going to be justified between, which means it's going to space out the inner elements. So we'll have the home link on the left. And then whatever we put next will get positioned on the right for this element. So I'm actually going to do a div because I want to have two different links inside of here. So the first one will be like sign in. It's going to go to the user sign in path, which right now we don't have to find. So I'm just going to put a pound sign. But I'll still do the styling. And also on this div, I'm going to add a flex class and a gap four. And I think that should be good. So we have the sign in right here. Let's do text white. And then also link to the account, which I'll use a pound sign for now. 
and I'll add the styling. I think for the create account, I'm going to turn it to a button. So I'll do like P2, PG Bay 500, X Gray 50, rounded large. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so this is kind of the overall look. There's the button, it doesn't have enough space, it's kind of like squeezed. Let's try to do text small so we can get a little bit more space back for the button and maybe reduce the padding. Let's do like PX2, PY, 0.5. It's gonna be a pretty thin button. Oh, that, that looks kind of bad, that looks kind of weird. Okay, PY1. Oh, there we go. I think, I mean, it still kind of looks like a, like a sub. <laughs> okay, let's do P2. There's not enough space. Maybe we have to go with the smallest text, text extra small. Make sure that there's enough space. That kind of works, but it doesn't really look that good. Okay, let's forget this. Let's go back to regular text. There's just not enough space. That's weird. We kind of have to, re I think we have to increase the space on the nav bar just a little bit. Let's do height 14. All right, that kind of works. Now I also want to center the sign in. I want to make that sign in smaller. Text XL is way too large, way too large. Okay, and then on this div right here, we also have to do a height full item center. There we go. Right, this is getting there, but because we increased the height on the nav bar, we also have to go back to the application file and change that padding to match the height of the nav bar, just so we have the correct styling still. All right, and this is how it's looking right now. So we have the home link, then we have sign in, create account, and this would go to the paths to sign in as a user. But right now we don't have a user model. We have an artist model, but we do not have a user model yet. Let me move my face down a little bit. So let's implement the user model real quick. And we already have device, so we don't have to install it. But I'm just going to go into the terminal and I'm going to run Rails G device user. Just like that, it's going to create the user model and set up all the routes. And then we can do Rails DB migrate to migrate to the database, restart the server, and just like that, we have user accounts. So now we can add the paths in on the nav bar. So for sign in, it's going to go to the new user session path. And for create account, it'll go to new user registration. Just like that. So we have our respective paths right there. Another thing we can do right off the bat is add a check. So we can do if not current user. So that means when you are signed in as a current user, you will no longer see these links, just like that. So now we can go and try to sign in. Log in as a user. First, you have to create an account. Oh no, now, now that I'm using a different model, we're getting an error on the fun method stage name because I was trying to set the stage name on the device registration. Oh, that's tricky. Because I added this on the registration path for the artist, but we don't have a stage name for a user. Sheesh, wait, how do we how do we do this? I think we're gonna have to add a condition real quick to fix the device registration page. So I'm on the new, we're gonna also have to add that on the edit. So I'm gonna add a condition around this field. We're going to check if resource name equals artist. Pretty sure just like that will work. And reload. All right, perfect. Our signup page is back. Now, one thing I'm noticing is now there's like too much padding for the signup page. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but there's like so much space up here. It looks kind of weird because of the nav bar, so that's something to think about. But you know, it's not too bad. But on mobile, it would be really, really bad. Look at that. That would be hard to use. I mean, it's not too bad, I guess. But we can think about this in a second. For now, I just want to make sure that the artist sign up still is working. Oh no, look, now I'm signing up as an artist. 
I don't see the stage name. No. If not, this logic wasn't really working. Let's just print the resource name on the page. I want to see what it's showing up as. So this is artist. But I should have done this check right here if resource name equals artist. It says false. Oh, maybe we have to turn it to string. Resource name to string. Because it might have like some sort of class or something that. Yeah, so I guess you have to turn it to a string. To string. That should fix it. All right, perfect. So on the artist page, we see the stage name. But if we go back and sign up as a user, we no longer, we just see the regular stuff. Okay. All right, cool. So I'm also gonna add this condition to the edit. And then any other fields that we add that are specific to artists, we'll just put inside of this condition. You have to remember that. And also the same thing for users because I'm sure we'll have some stuff that's specific to user model. All right, so let's reload. And now I'm gonna go and sign in, actually create my first user account. It's gonna use like this random email, sign up as a user. Boom, I've just signed up successfully. And right away, I guess they brought me back to the root path, which is actually this homepage. But I don't really like that. So what we can do is we can change the root path for a user. I don't know if you guys remember, but we did that for artists. So if we go to config and the routes.rb, inside of here we have this block authenticated artist where we're setting a new root. So as soon as you sign in as an artist, you don't get sent back to the homepage. You get sent to the artist dashboard. And we can do the same thing for users. So let's do an authenticated user do. We'll set the new root which is going to go to, uh, what, it, what would it be? It would be artist, or no wait, not artist dashboard. It would be the music show page. So music, pound sign show. And then we have to say as, and give it a new name. So authenticated user root, just like that. And now when we reload, our new root is actually just the music. Okay, this is perfect. And then over here, we don't have anything yet, but we probably have like a user drop down where we could have a few things and like a sign out link, settings, all that stuff. So we can actually add that in really quick. Let's do it. So let's go to the navbar partial inside the layouts folder. And here we have the check if not current user. I'm actually going to change this and then just have like both conditions. So I'll add an else. There we go. And then in here, if there is a current user, we can add that drop down. We probably want to have like a div class relative. Now we can have another div where we do like the you know the circle for the drop down. We do width width eight height eight rounded full. Maybe try like BG grade five hundred, and then inside of it we could just put the the users initials which since we just have their email we don't have their name right now it might just be like current user email first two so like the first two characters of my email it's kind of silly but we could do that for now we could also get icon you go to like hero icons and then get a user icon this might be a good idea also so maybe user circle we could take that svg just go pop it right here. Oh, whoops. I don't know why I didn't copy. Come on, copy to my... That's weird, it's like not working. There we go, I think I got it now. Let's switch out this big SVG. And for the size, we can just say like width full. And it should use the width eight right there. Which actually, we don't need that background either. I mean, maybe we want it. Also, it seems like there's padding or something. Interesting. We can change the fill on this. So, you know what? Let's just remove the div. Just leave the SVG. And let's do a width 10. And let's do a fill indigo 100. 
All right, so that's what it looks like. I guess the fill actually fills the inside. What if I want to color the outline? Hmm, interesting. Also do BG white. But that actually sets the background, but then we could do rounded full. But there's still like that little bit of padding on the SVG, interestingly enough. It looks kind of, it looks a little bit weird. Let's try Indigo 500. Okay. We could do fill white. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I don't know if I like this icon because it's kind of hard to style. All right, let's do control V. Let's go back, 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 back. All right, let's just do the, but I do kind of like the look of having like an icon in there. So we take the user icon, we stick it in. All right, let's just do that. Let's go with full. And for the fill, we can just do fill white. How about that? Reload. Okay, <laughs> it still looks weird. Oh, maybe I should have. Maybe I grabbed the wrong icon. Maybe I grabbed solid. No, I grabbed outline. For some reason, when I fill it, oh, I think I'm doing this wrong. Maybe you do text, text white to style an icon. Yeah, that's how you do it. I was getting it wrong because I think they added fill into Tailwind recently. Anyways, let's add some padding on the circle. Okay, we get something like that. I don't really like that gray color. Let's change that to like indigo. All right, you know what? That looks pretty solid right there. And then of course, when you hover or when you hover on it, it should have the cursor. So we can do, actually we should just add like a link wrapping this. Link to, we'll just do empty link. Do, and this will act as the toggle button for the drop down, which we're going to add right now. So we also have a div for the drop down itself. We're gonna give it a width. Let's do like width 56, height 56, BG white. Probably not gonna be white, but let's do absolute top. Now the thing about the top styling is we need to give it enough so that it can be at the bottom of the nav bar. So if we just do like height 14, that should be enough. That's a little bit too much because I think it actually starts from wherever our div is. So we could do a height 12. That'll probably give us enough. Whoops. Yeah, so that would be the drop down right there. Now we need to add some JavaScript to allow this toggling to work. So you can click here and then it would pop open the drop down. And yeah, definitely the white is too bright. We need to change that to like a gray. All right, just like that. That's fine for now. So when you click on it, it should open the drop down. Which right now it doesn't do any of that. So we need a new stimulus controller for this. So I'm gonna go to the console and generate a stimulus controller by typing Rails G stimulus. I'm gonna call it drop down. And we can restart the server. Now let's go back in here. Let's set up the stimulus controller real quick. I'm gonna put it on this div where we put the relative class. So I'll add data controller and set that to drop down. And then right here on this element, which is the drop down itself, we're going to add a hidden class. So it starts off hidden. And we're also gonna add a target. So we're gonna do a data drop down target. And we'll set this to menu. This is the menu that should open when you click right here on the link. So then the last thing is to set up the action on the link. So we're going to set the data action is going to go to drop down toggle, just like that. Now let's go into the JavaScript. So go to the JavaScript folder, controllers, drop down controller. And inside of here, I'm going to first add the targets. So the targets, the one that we have is the menu target. So I'll set that right there. And I'm just gonna rename the connect function to toggle. I'm gonna pass it the event. 
and then we're going to prevent default on the event. This is important because right now, when you click on something like a link, it has its normal action where it's supposed to like visit a URL. Now, right now it's not happening because we added the event, pre uh, we prevented the default, but before it was actually trying to follow to the pound sign URL or wherever it was supposed to be pointed at. All right, so now that we prevented default, we can add the rest of our code, which is really just going to the menu target and toggling the hidden paths, just like that. So now we can click, and boom, it pops open the dropdown, click again, and it closes. So that's pretty good for now. Now we can style this dropdown a little bit. I think we don't even need it to be that large. So let me go back into that bar. Let's change styling up to just whip 40 instead of 56. And inside of there, we can add our first link. We can go to settings. And this can just go to edit user registration paths. And we can add some styling. It's a little bit something. I also want to add a rounded class on the drop down. And click right here. Boom, we get our link to settings. That looks pretty good. We can center the items inside of the drop down too by adding like a flex class, flex call, item center, and then some padding. So you click again. Now we get all of our links are centered. Which I don't know if I don't know if I like centered links on a drop down. Looks a little bit off settling, but also it's kind of fine for now. And underneath settings, I'm just going to add the link to sign out as well. It's going to go to destroy user session path. And we can add some styling, which could just be like a background color. Do like a red 500, just so you know, like I'm signing out. And then we're also going to add a data turbo method. You need to make a delete request to the sign up path. And that's how you can set it up. So now we click again. We have this sign out link, which looks kind of dangerous. Click sign out and boom, you're signed out. That's awesome. Just like that, we've added in the nav bar. We've added in user accounts. You can sign in. I actually forgot what my email was. Isn't it like listener? Oh, yeah, we remembered. Boom. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Now, I might just try to like move the sign out down on the drop down so it's at the very bottom, real quick. Let me try to use justify self. Justify self and, and see if that works. It never works for me. Although. It's supposed to like center itself in whatever position, but it's not working for some reason. Another thing we can do for just right now is just add justify between. But once we have more links, we'll probably want to style it a little bit differently. But yeah, this is pretty good. Oh, another thing real quick before I end this video. So the drop down, we have it like popping open, but if you click anywhere else, you would expect the drop down to close, but right now it doesn't. It just stays open, which is kind of annoying. So to fix that, we can add a simple method in our CMS controller. And actually we're gonna start by adding an action. So I'm gonna add an action right on this div, which is gonna check for clicks on the window. And then it's gonna go to the drop down, close if outside. Yeah, we can just call it that. So that's gonna be the method name and we'll check if the clicks are coming from inside of the element or not. So close if outside. So what we'll do is we'll check if this.element.contains me.target. So that's how we can check if the current stimulus controller contains the thing being clicked. We actually wanna do the opposite. So we wanna do this exclamation mark, which will say if not, that's just like doing the opposite of this. So if it's not containing, which means it's outside of the stimulus controller, then we're gonna close. We just call this dot toggle. Or actually no, because this will happen more than once, which means then every time you click. So actually we wanna not do a toggle. We just wanna do like an add, 
but we don't want to add more than one hidden ever. So we need to do that check, the check that I've been doing. So if the class list, if it doesn't contain hidden, we're going to add it. So it'll only do it once. Even though if we like keep getting this event, it keeps happening. So now we can test this out by going back. Let's reload. And we can click on the drop down. So everything is working. I can click inside. But as soon as I click over here, you'll see the drop down closes. So that logic seems to work perfectly. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I think I'll end this video right here. But I'm very happy that we were able to add some more things to this app. Hope you guys are excited too. Stay tuned for more episodes. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the payments so we can turn this into a real working business so you can make money off this app. Like always, the code is down below, so you guys can have this code at its current state if you just go and download it from GitHub. So yeah, if you guys are going to create an app with this, I wish you good luck, and I know you're going to create like, the next best platform for musicians. And I would love to see it. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll talk to you later.